Hello students, in my last lectures, we saw that, that, that how the two waves superimpose to give beautiful interference patterns. And then after that, we saw that when we take the slit width into account, how the pattern changes. That, that was when we studied diffraction. And such kind of patterns we can observe by taking a single slit, double slit, and also many slits. So we have seen in the last lectures of interference and diffraction that how my intensity changes when I change number of slits or when I take the slit width into account. But these interference and diffraction experiments tell us about the wave nature of light, but they do not give any information about the type of wave, whether they are longitudinal or transverse, whether the vibrations are linear, circular or elliptical. The experiments which bring out these properties are known as polarization experiment. So this is our next topic which we are going to study that how polarization of light takes place. That how, what are the different methods? First of all, what is polarization? And then how can we achieve polarization of light? Okay. So, you all know about the ordinary light, the tube lights which we have in our rooms. This ordinary light, it emits atoms which are oscillating in all the random directions. Basically, light is an electromagnetic wave whose electric and magnetic field vectors, they can have any orientation. Such kind of light, when the oscillations or when the electric or magnetic field vector can have all possible orientations, such kind of light is known as unpolarized light. Unpolarized light, which has vibrations in all directions. Now, if I do something and if I achieve all these vibrations in a single directions, direction, then I can call that as polarized light. But then we have to understand that how do we achieve this polarization? But before going to that, first we will try to represent that how we can represent our unpolarized and polarized light. So polarized light, when the vibrations are confined, in only one direction. So before uh, going to uh, before studying that how can we polarize light, first we will try to study a general representation of unpolarized light and polarized light. As I said that unpolarized light has vibrations in all the directions. So I can represent my unpolarized light like this, where the vibrations are in all possible directions. Now, all these vibrations can be resolved into two linear component like this. For example, if I have any vibration in any direction, for example here, which makes an angle theta with the x-axis, I can resolve this as ax and ay in the two mutually perpendicular axis. Like this, I can resolve all my vibrations into two components, where Ax is equal to A cos theta and Ay is equal to A sin theta. So I can, all the vibrations will have two components, one perpendicular to the plane of propagation and other parallel to the plane of propagation. So if I denote my components parallel to the plane of propagation like this. This is parallel to the plane of propagation and another one as dots which shows perpendicular perpendicular 
to plane of propagation. Propagation. Then my unpolarized light will consist of both. So I can represent my unpolarized light like this. Because all the two, all the vibrations can be resolved into two linear components. So both parallel and perpendicular. So this would be the representation of unpolarized light. And the first two which I have drawn, which has vibrations only in one direction, can be the representation of polarized light. So these two would be the representation of polarized light. So from now on, whenever we are going to do any experiment, I would be using this representation of unpolarized light and polarized light. So this is my unpolarized light. Now the next obvious question which comes to our mind is that, that how can we polarize light? So there are numerous ways in which we can polarize light. I would be presenting my parallel vibrations like this and perpendicular like this. Now let us try to polarize light by simplest method known as by reflection. What do we do that? We shine unpolarized light on a glass plate. Here we have a glass plate and then we shine unpolarized light. When the light is sh incident on a glass plate, it will reflect and refract. Now we are considering unpolarized light. So it has vibrations parallel to the incidence plane and perpendicular both. This is my source unpolarized light. And this is my glass plate. So what was observed in experiment that the reflected light was partially polarized. What was observed when the light was instant at any arbitrary angle. So the reflected light had more perpendicular component and less parallel. But it has similarly for the refracted light. It has both the components. But the reflected light had more perpendicular component. But then it was obs also observed in the experiment that when we do the same experiment, so we varied the angle of incidence. What was observed that at a particular angle, the reflected light was completely polarized. It had only perpendicular component. What do you mean by perpendicular component? The vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence. And this angle when it was measured, for example, for the glass came out to be 57 degree. So when the reflected light had only one component, we can call this as plane polarized. And this angle, specific angle, which depends upon the material that was known as polarizing angle. So this was one way of polarizing light by reflection. That if we instant light on a material, for example, glass at 57 degree, the reflected light was plane polarized. Then there was a scientist named as Brewster. What did he observe? He observed that at this polarizing angle where the reflected light was plane polarized, he made an additional observation. Let me call this as phi tilde which is the polarizing angle and my reflected light is completely plane polarized. It is unpolarized. He observed that the reflected light OR and the refracted light this later on transmits are perpendicular to each other. So he made an observation that at polarizing angle angle the reflected light is completely polarized OR is 
perpendicular to OT. Then he used this observation and gave a remarkable result. What we can get from here? We'll try to use the Snell's law. Let n be the refractive index of this glass plate. Now, using Snell's law, what do I get? For example, this is phi tilde and my refracted angle is phi tilde prime. So, from Snell's law, n is equal to sin phi tilde upon sin phi tilde prime. Now, from Brewster's observation, this is my first equation. We know that OR is perpendicular to OT. So, phi tilde plus 90 degree plus phi tilde prime, this will be equal to pi. So, my phi tilde prime would be 90 minus phi. By using this observation of Brewster, I can find that by substituting this phi tilde in equation number 1, I will guide get phi n sin phi tilde upon sin 90 minus phi tilde which is equal to cos tilde and this is equal to 10 phi tilde. This was a remarkable ob observation that your polarizing angle is related to the refractive index. We got the relation as n is equal to phi tilde. This is related, the refractive index is related to the polarizing angle. This is known as Brewster's law. Next we will try to see that how by other means we can again polarize light. Let us see that in next lecture.